Okay, well, we're running slightly behind. So those that are joining us online, thanks for joining us online. Um, we didn't send out the link like we were supposed to send out the link. So that might have made a little bit of a difference, but hopefully we've sent it out for everybody to see. Um, Anita, okay, people coming in. Elizabeth, hey, 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 waves, waves. Um, so tonight we are talking on uh, one of Mark's favorite subjects, which is how to estimate renovations, right? Which is an important thing for us to know as investors, right? So if you don't know how to estimate renovations and you're going to be fixing and flipping properties, that could be quite a problem, right? But the issue we have, the issue that many inv investors face right now is speed to a deal, right? So you need to be able to estimate renovations at a high level without potentially even looking at the property first. And so how can you do that? Well, we're going to walk you through how you can do that, uh, especially in your market. Now, if you're joining us and you're in another market, your price per square foot is probably going to vary. So you're going to have to find what your price per square foot is for the different levels of renovation that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, but before we get into this, uh, let's start off the way we always kind of start off. Like, who are you? What's your name? What do you do? Who are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Slides. What? Slides? There you go. Oh, so close. Put this over here. Maybe that'll work. Okay. There you go. Hell with that. Okay. All right. Now that I've got slides moving, okay. now you know how to follow my slides. Yeah. Uh, so, everybody, Mark Beckett. Uh, Rob and I have been doing this for like a dozen or so years. Uh, talking about what we do in. Uh, buying, selling, renovating, renting out houses. So I focus largely on that business along with our construction business, which is where some of this information comes from, which is why sometimes it's not helpful to know something. Uh, I'm in, the, in there this afternoon, like changing some of the numbers. Up. Well, that's not right anymore. Well, that's going up. Uh, I guess it is. Yeah, because things, things have gone up a lot. It's, not, yeah, it's a little nuts out there uh, right yeah. now. And actually, the cost of things isn't even so much an issue. Just getting a hold of some things is an issue. I have projects now that we've been waiting for a month for parts to come in. Projects otherwise done. I've got a 90% finished kitchen with no doors because the cabinet supplier can give me boxes and no doors. Uh, so it's a it's a bit of a mess. Uh, we can talk about that that part of it too. But that's a lot of what I kind of get to do for most days is figure out how to get stuff put together and hopefully buy houses every once in a while that make some sense to renovate. Occasionally even rent them out uh, and always looking for more. So if anybody ever knows of anything. That's out there that we should be looking at. We love to partner on stuff, we buy things, we wholesale stuff. Uh, we're just looking for ways to kind of get ourselves involved yeah. in some deals. Yeah. So that's what I focus on. How about you? You know, my focus on, is on making sure that we're adding value to our grid community and to all of our agent partners out there and all of our investors. Uh, you know, my name is Rob Chavez. I'm one of the facilitators of Grid Reston. Like Mark said, we started this actually over a decade ago. Right, and now we're in 27 uh, chapters around 12 different states um, and rapidly expanding. And so our commitment is to help our local community build wealth in real estate investing. And it just so happens that uh, we work with a lot of agent investors who want to learn how to invest in real estate and run chapters at hyper local levels. So, um, so I'm excited about this topic because I don't need to do the majority of the talking. Like I normally do the majority of the talking. Tonight, right, the professor, uh, AKA Mark Beckett, my business partner is gonna do the majority of the talking and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just be side fun. All right, right? good. I'll keep it. I'll you, keep it light. You run over top of all my yeah, well color commentary. And the co I'm and the color so commentary, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, part of it is I, I come at it from the real estate agent standpoint because we run a large team based out of Reston, Virginia. And so I'm always looking at it through that filter and then I look at it through the investment filter and then I always get confirmation from the professor and I think you're right on, on what this analysis looks like, right? So, um, so we normally also make introductions to people online, right? Um, and it's a little late tonight. So I think you got some of the communication out late. That didn't help. It is, uh, there's some 
political stuff happening the first Tuesday of the month will occasionally bite us on like election nights or state of the union nights or nights that other things are happening. Uh, so that could uh, could have some people's attention too. But hopefully anyone that's not able to be here either with us or catch us while we're doing it live, these do get recorded so you'd be able to see them later online uh, through our other distribution channels, gridinvestor.com, right? We our YouTube channel, Grid Investor. Playbacks, you can look at YouTube. like all of them from all the different leaders from different markets, which is really interesting, right? Because you'll get the perspective of different leaders in different markets and how they will either estimate renovations or do wholesaling. Or I saw Corey and them in Knoxville tonight talking about how to do Airbnbs. This is kind of cool, right? And so they're talking about how to do that at a high level. Yep. Um, but why don't we just kind of do some basic intros? Yeah, right? so that's who we are. Um, and this is a facilitated discussion, right? We're not here to guru ties anybody. There are no books and tapes for sale. In the back of the room, we're just talking about how this business works for us, and we do it because this activity works for us. We get to meet new people. We get to get involved in uh, new deals and activity and stuff. And just good things come when you know a bunch of other people. Yeah, we always say the power, the power is in the network. The power is in a cup of coffee with a person next to you or behind you, and just meeting people, whether it's online, right, uh, or whether it's just here in the room. So why don't we go through some basic intros to people that we do. Coleman, we'll start with you. Okay, sure right. thing. Um, so I'm Coleman Bales. Um, you know, been investing in real estate for about the past two years or so um, with my mother. We've been going 50-50 um, on a variety of different flips and rentals. Um, also a mortgage lender by trade. Um, work here in the office and for McLean Mortgage. Um, that's about it. Awesome. Great to have you. Doing some cool stuff. Um, I'm Lori Bales. As Cole said, I'm his mom and um, investor, also real estate agent in Winchester, Virginia, and was a contractor at the time of the death. You. Um, hi there. I'm Sloan Louise, and I'm a rest and realtor, and I do some buy and hold investing uh, with my husband. And we just uh, primarily do it in Reston and uh, always keeping my eyes peeled a little bit and uh, always eager to learn and uh, appreciate the, uh, the wisdom coming from uh, well from everyone in the network but particularly from the guys at the front of the room right now. So, so when's that property going up on the market in Reston or is it? Are you going to sell it? Okay. Uh, yeah we're going to sell it. We're still we're working on some of the upgrades I might actually chat with you. When, when will it come on the market? Uh, I think we're looking probably in the next four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. So if you're looking for a single family home in Reston, which there are like, literally there's like no there's inventory. Two and a half of them. Right? <laughs> right? How many are there right now? Two and a half. Yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah. like literally there's no inventory. Uh, yeah. Sloan's got a, a beautiful home that's gonna be coming on the market here soon enough. <clears throat> um, and it's got an amazing view and yeah. it's packed yeah. to pass and all the rest. to rest in trees, we're gonna have some yeah. nice renovations. A little bit of a mid-century flair. Yeah, a little mid-century flair. So if you're looking yeah. for a mid-century, hit me up. I'll be the buyer. We'll be the buyer's agent. Yeah, so, right? so yeah. yeah, and it. Uh, I think it's probably going to be in the mid to high 700s. I, I think. Somewhere okay. In there. Cool. Mid the, the mid the high 70s. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah, it's hard to get a single family house. Welcome, welcome to that right now. So very cool. Great. Go ahead. Introduce yourself. Me? Hi, uh, Graham Tracy. I uh, run a small real estate team here in Reston and um, looking to learn a little bit, help other people that are small time investors that we interact with in the community, but also uh, potentially invest ourselves at some point. So, sure. Wanting to learn. I, I, I would say, you know, you add more value to, the, to your client when you can combine this agent side of the business with the investment knowledge, it literally becomes like rocket fuel for the client because you stop being a, viewed as a transactional agent and you're now a true fiduciary for the client because you see real estate from a 360 perspective mm -hmm. versus just the narrow lens that an agent brings. And so we call that the AI you know, uh, agent, right? The agent investor. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we're building a whole platform actually specifically geared to the to the AI agent that to help them like as you as you go on this journey with your uh, with you guys 
you'll also be able to bring your clients along on that journey, right? Because right. it's very hard for you to take a client on that journey if you have to if you haven't gone on that journey yourself, right? right. So welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that's my point. Thank you. We're doing some basic introductions. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Vikas Kovar, and finally I made first investment. Oh, oh nice. congratulations! Yeah. Woo, woo. And you remember I was sending emails with you like a month ago? Great! And uh, uh, yeah, so finally I just you know broke that ice. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard to figure that out. But let, let me tell you, the first one is always kind of the hardest one, exactly. right? What did you end up buying? Was it a buy and hold or was it a fix? It's a buy, so uh, yeah, so it's a buy and hold. Uh, right. It's a count home to begin with. Uh, five year uh, plan, you know, cash on cash, 6.6% per cent, but I'm projecting 14% IRR. So, uh, so uh, I had that fancy Excel sheet, which probably some, you know, I got it from these meetups and I use that. So it kind of looks like I'll hold it for five, five years and if everything goes well and uh, probably just, uh, you know, uh, figure it out. Basically, my plan is five years. So five years. Now, yeah. Okay. And then uh, now I'm uh, uh, the hardest part was figuring out what market, right? Where do sure. I? Yeah, Ohio, Memphis, you know, Virginia is so expensive. I mean, uh, where do I get the cash flow and the and the and the growth I'm looking for? So I finally found something in Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina. Charlotte. I, li yeah. I like that area. I was kind of you know really. I put like seven offers, finally got one going. And now, like uh, now I'm heavily after a three unit, four unit multi family, uh, either in um, in the same market or in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Great. So let's see how- So we got happens. Jess in, Jess in Columbus? Near. Near Columbus. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I, yeah, I would appreciate any introductions because it's kind of it's kind of hard, right? You make your team, find out the right people, people you can you know build relationships with, trust them on the ground. It, that itself is like um, you know. A That's a process, right? So yeah. one of the things is we we have a grid chapter opening up in Columbus, okay. right? Uh -huh. uh, that should be launching in the next month or so. Awesome. And then I talked to somebody who's looking to uh, uh, set one up in. Um, Greensboro, right? Oh, lovely. Um, yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, 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 in South Carolina. So I spoke to her uh, yesterday. Okay. And so we'll be expanding into these other markets to essentially facilitate this because it is harder in this area. Although you can't find them in this area, but you've got to go to like Winchester or Front Royal or, you know, some of the outskirt areas. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I know. So I got, I got so much um, like, I went really deep into it. So uh, Greensboro, Danville is also one area where, Danville, I, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I've made some great relationships. I'm thinking, you know, if I can find something there. Um, I really want to do two things this year more before I can call it a year. And I think I, I'll be able to do that. One is a multi-family, three, three unit, four unit, not a big one. Sure. Something below 500K. And then the second is I want to really kick off the Airbnb. Okay. So, mm -hmm. If I can get that. We have a couple of us in here that just, you guys doing the Airbnbs? Or is that the one? That's yeah. first. Oh, first. Yeah. 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 We're, We're doing our, our second one. Okay. You are? Okay. Wait, what market are you in? Front Royal. Front Royal? Front Royal. Okay. Both all Shannon Dome. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably I'll, uh, I'll explore that. I'll learn from you. Because right now I was like so much focused on College Hill and Greensboro. Because yeah. I found a team there. They are like, we'll, we'll take it. We'll run, run, it, run this for you. So yeah, so let's see how this year go. Well, congrats on getting that first one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the hardest one. Yeah. Go ahead, introduce yourself real fast. Hi. Oh, okay. Yeah, ladies no, first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My name is Sheila, and my ID on that meetup is uh, Sheila. Oh yes. Okay. So that, that's my family uh, name. So, and um, I, I'm interested in rental, like a uh, uh, investor. Okay. Um, property because like uh, all the kids I graduated from college, I don't have to pay mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff, so have some extra money and I put on uh, stock and the boom, so it, it, it lose money now that I earn money. So I, I like to try <clears throat> the investment uh, property. The real estate side. Yeah. Great. yeah. So I, I live in Fairfax and I work for Fairfax County. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so um, we'll talk a little bit. When is our buy and hold section? 
I think typically in the summer, in like the summer. July, August, but yeah. actually we're now going to possibly integrate a short-term rental discussion because that is uh, a big really one. big part of, of what we're doing. So we'll figure out what the summer kind of layout is. Yeah. The buy and hold we'll, is, is in there. But we'll talk, uh, you know, at any point, if you have questions, you can always call me, call Mike. That, yeah. That's what we do is we help our clients build wealth by buying cash flow properties right in in our market and we know where to look and where to kind of you know where it's going to be impossible like arlington might be mission impossible right but uh but then if if you go a little if you're willing to go out a little bit maybe an hour away from where you live you could normally find some things right so, yeah. mm -hmm. go ahead yes my name is corey um i'm a dual agent i'm with uh pierce cement realty I've been doing that for a couple of years now. I work for a full-time tech company. I uh, started getting into investments. Uh, I haven't started initially, but I started getting, getting my feet wet and understanding the whole process uh, since I got into bigger pockets. Mm -hmm. I uh, just recently bought a bunch of their books. I'm reading up on it, Follow You on Grid Investor on Facebook and Instagram. And like you mentioned, Rob, um, I'm looking to become like a well-rounded uh, not just a transactional uh, agent, but you know, AI, as you said. So yep. uh, that is ultimately my goal. Uh, I want to network with a bunch of investors, understand their needs, just really dig deep and understand the lingo and the language that goes with it. Yeah. So, That's awesome. so this is my first time here. So cool. Well, welcome. Welcome. I appreciate it. Did you see? I, I guess I was in Denver. I met. The CEO yeah, of the Yeah, that's right. I briefly saw that. Yeah. How was that? It was great. It was great. Okay. You know, we're talking about um, a program that they're going to roll out that we will help test for them. And, okay. uh, it, you know, it should be pretty cool. So that we'll, we'll see. It's, it, it's not easy. Like, they, they're a media company, so they understand how to create great media. And there's a lot of leads that pass through their Excellent. their. Uh, podcast they get a million downloads per episode which is pretty crazy right it's amazing um but working with investor buyers is uh if you don't know how to work with investor buyers it can be very challenging it's like i'm i'm buying whole properties it's very normal eight to one ten to one offers before you can get one right at least at least you know at least if it's a fix and flip that well, that's not very profitable for an agent to do a fix and flip unless you're gonna partner with them and, and as a business partner, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know you're essentially looking for a needle in a haystack. So and if you found that you should buy it because the money is available. And so there, there's ways to, to work with investors, right? Help your clients build wealth. Mm -hmm. So welcome. Thank you. Mr. John. Rob, well, Mark, good to see you. I am the owner of PMI Fairfax. We are a residential and commercial property management company. We've been coming through the group for 10 years, years, years probably. Yeah. Got Rob in the Bitcoin. He's very happy. <laughs> um, yes. Got Mark in the Dogecoin. He's very happy. No. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, we, we've been uh, involved with Rob and Mark for a long, long time. Love the guys. Um, not a better group of guys to learn from as far as real estate investment. And things of that nature, um, buy and hold flip, A to Z, really, Rob and Mark. Um, they're, they're probably the group that I, I, I most highly recommend because there's, there, there's not a book that they're selling, there's not a program that they're selling, it's just pure information and knowledge and growing the group and growing you guys as far as investors, real estate agents, and, and mortgage brokers, and everything else. It's, it's probably the best all around group that I. That I found and trust me, I've seen a few. Yeah, you go to all of them, right? I, they, yeah. yeah, I do. I, I, I love Rob, but I do go to all of them. <laughs> um, but honestly, like, like Rob Mark is probably the most honest and, and, and straightforward guys. We pay them for all this, by the way. Guys. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I'll, uh, actually, in my bank I, no. I do pay John John, and that is one of my properties. So actually, true, true, true. But it does a very good job. So the yeah. love is right back at you, bro. No, appreciate it. But no, in all honesty, they, they are truly, this is a group to grow with. And if you're looking to be a better investor, a better agent, a better broker, it, 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 anything in all the real estate, it, it's Mark and Rob. Well, really. um, happy to help in any way. I, I don't say I've seen it all, but I've seen a lot. So definitely give me a call. Give Mark and Rob a call. Um, I, 
think I think a lot of our synergy is we want to see you guys grow and develop and, and do greater. So I think that's that's a lot of the synergy there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Mike. Um, I'm an agent and investor. Uh, I work with Rob with Costa Group. Um, I got in. To, I got like interested in investing maybe like three years ago and I did like, you know, like six months, something just of like reading research and then like I partnered on a couple of flips then I got a, a rental um, and I, I just really liked in real estate investing. So I was like, how do I do more of this? And I decided to become an agent so I can help other people invest and like, you know, we talk about like agent investor, but like I got into being an agent with that in mind sure. you know that was kind yeah. of where i started from so yeah um, yeah that was my wife and i we, we started on the investment side and then and then migrated to the agent business yeah. because the agent business provides steady 30 60 90 day money when you could build a machine and, and then you buy assets along the way and it becomes a model right so jack you like you're gonna like we're gonna do a deal is this what's gonna happen i hope so i, I hope so. picked up a deal today i was lucky enough we picked up a deal yesterday okay so things are moving along um so i was on my way here picked up a flat tire oh no went to, and, yeah they went to ntv across the street and they said that they were closed of course i said i have cash and so they were like okay wait one second <laughs> and um so i went there 150 dollars later okay. my mercedes tire has been replaced with a nail it was a nail so they just replaced it so anyways, what works it was, any construction sites on Sunset Hills, just don't be in the right lane. Stay <laughs> in the left lane, because you always pick up nails there. And um, yeah. so my name is Jad Sir. So I've been coming here since Rob has started the group. Um, I was even here when they were used to be downstairs. I was even here where they used to have food for us. Before, <laughs> I mean, with, with Listen, we're waiting. Portico. One time. One time we had the general. We're waiting for you know, these are temporary offices for us right now. We're waiting for the new office space to open up. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah. so uh, I've been coming here for a while. And so I'm excited. Um, I'm excited that Rob's venturing out to Front Royal and doing stuff there and doing Airbnbs. I wish you the best. Thanks, man. It's the, it's a, I have 65 units there, and I can't wait to sell them. How many minutes um, you have? 65. Okay. Yeah, you should just put them on the market now because if, listen, if you don't want them five years from now, you might as well sell them now because five years no, from no, now, we're just gonna keep them in trust. like who knows what's going to happen. I have three kids. My brother has four boys and they're, they're, we don't know how sharp they're going to be. So, <laughs> they're gonna be income. Okay. so, we're so you put up the, for the headache now. <laughs> yeah, but just uh, Okay. Yeah, cool. we just got 26 um, units, Montclair apartments. And, so that's that. So I've been flipping a lot of houses. I, I, I was buying and holding. I just, I think I told Rob, I did four houses in Stafford recently because of the inflation going up to 10%. So I bought it. I um, bought two of them sight and seen. Big mistake. <laughs> one of them didn't have water. The other one, they said septic was fine. It turned out to be a disaster. The other one, um, I bought a sight and seen. It was like a really good house, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. For only 190, the ARV was 335. I was like, how bad can it be? They had tenants living in there. The rehab cost is not being $96,000. That's why I'm giving little waves everybody on here. Oh, look at all these people giving you waves. What's up? Um, so we're to the so water. So Chad, are we, we going to do it? Are you going to buy one of our properties that we just Yeah, bought? I mean, like I have, I have money. Okay. You know, that's not a problem. I have like, I have investors that like have like their money is literally sitting in my account and they text me and they're like, when are you going to put our money to work? Are you going to? Okay, well, because she was asking. So anyhow, we announced it. I actually think it, it, it is, you know, fairly priced where we put it at. Which the, This is the one that's got I already, I already locked it up. You locked it up? Okay, good. I was going to say, this is, so part of the, comp, part of the tonight's conversation is going to be. a lot of people reach out to me about this. Yeah, problem. how, but, but speed is what wins you in this market. So you have to kind of. I, well, I grew up in that area. So I, you know, and so I know I was pretty familiar with it. What I, what I recommend to everyone in this room and anyone on this call, since I flipped 40 plus houses last year, I've made all the mistakes. So like when a person brings me a deal, I already know what's the worst that can happen. And if I, if, so when I calculate a house, I'm like, the worst that can happen is this to me. So if that's the worst that can happen and I can still make some money, then I'll do it. And if worst the worst, I'll just keep it as a rental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why. I yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good possible exit for this one too. Somewhere. But there are some issues with the house that could be a $31,000 issue, mm -hmm. um, which could blow up your budget. 
-hmm. But let's roll the dice. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Let's do it. The boys ball chapter seven. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> True. No. And then online here we've got we've got a few people. We've got Ryan, we got Raj, Naveen. So put in the comments a little bit what area you're from. I know Brian's from St. Louis. Right? He's my brother-in-law. He's really awesome and cool. What's up? What's up? Um, okay. Okay, guys, let's uh, let's get into that. Yeah, so that's that's who everybody is: agents, yeah. investors, uh, buy and hold people. Experience, new, like everybody, right? So, Want to be gurus? Not at all. No. Not at all attorneys. Not at all accountants, right? So important legal stuff. Don't blame us, but all those pear shapes that do. Vet anybody that you do chat with in the room. We love doing deals with people. Just make sure you check everybody out. Know what you're doing. Uh, and uh, yeah, be be smart, be safe. So what we're talking about tonight is renovating houses. You're technically in front of the screen. So the reason why Kate says that you're technically renovating the house. Go. Rob, the reason why Kate says that I passed my GC license. Oh, and yeah. he said, by the way, he's an attorney, yeah. and he said that the GC license is it's part of so the art. <laughs> it's part of the art. There's a lady that owns, owns, owns a big, like, a university painter, so I can say which location. But the lady's been in the business since, like, 2001, and she failed it four times. Yeah. And she called me, she's like, how do we pass this exam? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. and uh, she does, like, remodeling and stuff. It's open book, right? It's nine books. Yeah, it's there's gypsum. It's the hardest drywall. subject I've never taken. Yeah. yeah. Ever. Gypsum, drywall, cement, <laughs> masonry. Something called the IRC code. Do you even know what the IRC code is? <laughs> no. Okay, it's, it's, it's nine books. That's crazy. Open book, and the books are like that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> okay, well, now I have a lot more respect for it. <laughs> 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 you have to do it for 30 minutes and you're renovating the property and getting the estimate. You know everything, of course. Well, that's yeah. why I'm here today, because I'm really excited about this topic. Like, yeah. this is. I'm, I, after you and I leave today, we're going to learn how to fight Well, she, <laughs> she was a contractor, too. Right, or still is. Oh, you still have your GC license. You still have your GC license, right? So there you go. We should start like a therapy. Once you get it, you're never. Like, yeah, you don't want to let it go. It's so, never, so never. Never. okay. You can, uh, Jan. You can join the support group. Probably yeah. be starting one somewhere at some point. The biggest thing about being a GC and giving these estimates is like the thing that people expect free estimates all the time. Like, oh, come by for this five thousand dollar job in the middle of traffic. Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, you Facetime that. Sh me like I'm not driving <laughs> yeah. from Oakton to Stafford or from Oakton to wherever Alexandria on um, you know how long it takes yeah you know, that's a that's a topic for another that, time that, right that will come up in the support group we'll talk about <laughs> oh my I'd say no uh but what we didn't say no to was a, a couple of houses that we've uh, bought and renovated so what we're talking about tonight is how to guesstimate the cost of those renovations so and Johnny go ahead. Interrupt the, yeah Flow, but Rob has a really good method in kind of coin and zone mm -hmm. where that will help with the, that sort of process. Like you zero in, you own, you know, or you, yeah, you yeah. just don't leave a three mile radius from where you are, and there's plenty of business that's there. And it's, uh, yeah, it's right. a zone method. It's you zone just walk into a target firm and coin. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to look in the Rob's zone method. Yeah. Uh, so, we're talking about renovations, right? And as you said, uh, Rob, uh, what we don't want to do is drive around, not just for other people, not even for ourselves. A lot of people have deals. They're probably, I got a deal, I got to do, buy this thing, look at this thing, there's something on the market. <laughs> a lot of stuff will come across your desk. Uh, but what you don't want to do is hop in the car or even worse, grab your contractor and make them drive across town in the middle of traffic and go look at a house that maybe you'll buy and maybe you won't if you're still just looking at the thing, right? Some way to try to figure out, kind of to Jad's point, um, how much the thing might hurt you or what possibly from what information you do have uh, could need to be done in these properties. And after having done uh, a few dozen for a while, Jad, I think you'd agree that a lot of the stuff is fairly formulaic. We do the same kinds of things in most houses. Most of the houses we buy need roughly the same kinds of work. We very rarely buy a house where everything's already done and everything's already beautiful because why would they sell it to us at 60% of the uh, dollar cost and, and then try to uh, add more value to it. We're buying houses that need work, right? So the work that we do is sort of standardized. And if you can standardize something, 
you can duplicate it and if you can duplicate it and put it in a process you can make it at least somewhat repeatable and understandable and applicable to something else it's like a production line so that's kind of the the point of what we're trying to do is figure out how i can make the house i'm looking at over here understandable in reference to a house that i did over here and use that information to take a good guess well most you know house. when people first get into this business they they they, they get in because uh they they love design they love like that you know but eventually what they've got to learn is that this is like a widget and it's a system and you need to know like well, hey this is the paint color i'm going to put in the flooring and it's you you, you have all relationships with all your contractors set up and you just go, right? I know Skylar and I were talking about that. And she really wants to improve a house and make it awesome. And I'm like, well, you can't make it too awesome for the neighborhood, right? It's got to fit the neighborhood. Otherwise, you get over improvements, which can happen. So you know what else can hurt you is when you do a lot of houses, <coughs> is you become like the jilted, the jilted man who keeps getting left at the altar, right? So for instance, I was thinking today about like if that house had solar panels. So I've done a house. I bought a house in Glen Burnie that had solar panels. And I was like, how bad can solar panels be? So I bought it. I make 55000 off of it, right? I was thinking about it today. If that house had come on the market today, I would buy it. Because solar panels were such a pain in the ass, right? Very difficult. Because if people are like, there's a 15-year lease. Who the F wants to assume a 15-year lease on, on solar panels? You can't check the roof, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the other hand, you're like, but if I didn't buy it, I would have lost out on $55,000. So like the more houses you do, sometimes you can talk to yourself out of things yeah you, sure. you, you know i i uh and i promise i shut up mark and i know what you were um i got all right <laughs> so we had to sell a house where there was tesla so solar panels sure. i was like how does tesla stay in business i could not yeah, get, it's i couldn't talk to anybody we couldn't get information on the lease uh, i was trying to contact Elon musk yeah. Yeah, you have to assume it before you sell it and then you have to get the person on the phone it was crazy it was crazy. We finally got it done, but it, it, it took months. And I was like, how is it that you can't, nobody knows what's going on in Tesla. Yeah. Nobody. When it came to the solar panels, right? So, but well, Tesla doesn't make solar panels. So was it their, so it wasn't the roof. Was they're, uh, solar, solar, solar city. Solar city. Solar city. city. It was solar city, okay. right? So different, technically different company. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> same, same CEO. <laughs> we're we're also not matter. stock brokers, yeah. uh, so don't take anything yeah. we say as financial advice. Uh, okay, so there's plenty of stuff to look out for, right? But there's also plenty of things that are kind of standardized. So let's see if I can get this doodad to work. Oh, a laser. No, that doesn't work. I'm aiming my laser at a TV. Oh, well, you can see on my little photo here on the screen, anybody uh, who's <laughs> On the Zoom, I should probably share my screen. Uh, let's try that. Entertain. Bam. And well, now I can't see anything else, but whatever. That's it's sharing. At least the Zoom folks can see what's going on here. So, uh, a single family house. I think this one was in uh, Annandale. Uh, and we do pretty standard cleanup kind of stuff on the outside, right? We want to take anything that's kind of two-toned and half brick, half siding, and try to unify the color and the look of the thing to somewhat modernize and clean and fresh. If it's wildly overgrown, we want to get rid of anything that's blocking the view of the house. If it's got kind of burgundy shutters on old yellow siding, we try to change the colors to make them a little bit more neutral. Right, same kind of stuff your agent would tell you if they came up to your house says what you should do, get the thing ready. It's always clean it, neutralize it, shine it up, right? Those are the, the kind of things that we do. But this is an example of what the outside of a renovated house looks like. So when we get to numbers and I'm talking about this leads you X number of dollars to do something outside, this is the kind of thing that I mean. It's not been lushly landscaped. We're not putting in usually really fancy hardscape items. I'm not putting pools in for houses that we renovate, not putting in giant fountains and kind of crazy walls and all kinds of stuff like that. We just clean up what's there uh, and try to get things kind of neutral and reasonably uh, fresh. It's about, it's about doing, you know, the right renovations are going to get you the maximum return. There is, 
you know, a place where people start just doing too much and not going to get incremental return. But because people fall in love with the project and they want it to be beautiful, they start thinking about then they, they go a little too far. So there's a balance between those two. Thank you, Buki. Yeah. 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 So that's that's what it's about. And and you won't see a lot in here that's like super exciting and sexy stuff because as you're saying, Rob, that's not what it's not the end of the market that we're typically playing in. We're in kind of the middle of the Mid -market. road, middle market. Uh, not really. Of course, uh, if you're doing high in luxury, that's different. Totally different. Yeah, your price per square foot is going to be different, right? We're talking about middle market right now. And occasionally you'll find a property if you buy like a cabin and you're renovating, or you find something that's super architecturally significant, a mid century modern thing, then you would do things maybe different than what you're going to see in, in a colonial in uh, a Virginia suburb. Uh, but by and large, it's kind of down the road. A lot of you'll see a lot of neutral colors, a lot of white, silvers, and grays, right? Because that's what is popular. So this is a renovated bathroom. Uh, the big deal is that you go from skanky, dirty, moldy to clean and new and not dangerous, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of the the goal. What kind of floors did you say? Not dangerous. Say again. What type of hardwood floors did you? Hardwood floors. So right now, I would say in bathrooms. 90-ish plus percent of the time we're using LVP uh, or LVT, uh, vinyl tile or vinyl plank, which is wood looking vinyl tile, right? Uh, I just got something from the depot the other day. It was their life proof um, that we put in some houses that looks really good. And it's actually a really easy to work with product. We were buying like stuff from California and we've got some floor decor and we found some other internet places because a lot of the stuff at the Big box store was a little on the cheaper end. It didn't look so good. It didn't click together so well. It wasn't great to work with uh, in a higher end house, but the products have gotten a lot better. They look better. They go together better. They wear better. And you will see if you go into new construction houses now, there are million dollar new construction houses in the area with luxury vinyl plank floors. Wow. Right? Uh, it's just it, the products come a long way. So we don't actually tile a lot. Uh, in bathrooms, if we can help it, unless we're going for something really particular stylistically that they, they just don't make it in vinyl. But if they make it in vinyl uh, in a click down or floating floor, I'll probably use that just about anywhere if I can. Uh, but I think in these, I can't, well, can't tell if those are tile or vinyl, it's probably tile. Probably tile. Uh, at at this point, from, yeah, from more than a year or so ago. But nowadays, largely tile. But these are, again, not super fancy things. That's an in-stock uh, toilet. That is a vanity that I can get from a uh, cabinet supplier that can have it here in a couple of weeks. This isn't custom stuff. Any custom bits about some of this might be if we uh, swap out the vanity, we may have the stone guy come and give us a custom top so that we're not buying the ones at the depot that come with like the really thin, uh, cheaper marble in most of the projects in a rental grade house and we'll talk in, in a second about pricing for things like rental grade that's usually pretty much it already comes in a box from the depot maybe even with the faucet already attached that's what goes in a lot of the rental products not short-term rental not vacation rental but long-term typical what you think of tenant type rentals uh, that's more uh, out of the box kind of stuff but this stuff is not out of the box but it's not like we're custom ordering things and, and having to bring people in to do custom cabinets and stuff these lights are all from wayfair and all modern which is all the same company by the way wayfair owns like five or six different brands that just sell different kinds of styles of stuff chad where are you getting a lot of your stuff right now i have no idea you don't know you've got your guys oh you get your contracts too yeah got it but i was just asking but now they have that license yeah now you got your license i gotta cool. learn well Get uh, trade accounts at Wayfair and All Modern, and there's really no such thing as a trade account at the Depot. But there's ways you can have a credit line over there. there. The Depot for credit line, yeah, would would help. Uh, but we're not getting too too terribly crazy. There's you know, a dozen different websites that a lot of this stuff comes from. If we don't get it from a Home Depot, Lowe's, a Ferguson, a, a floor and decor, a thing that's local uh, in a box store, we can walk in. Uh, oh, uh, there's uh, that glass door there. Uh, on that shower is like 1200 bucks. Uh, 
if anybody would like to go into like a glass door business with me, I guess it's a terrible idea because no one is out there cracking it yet. But I, there's got to be a way to get that done. It's just a stinking piece of glass. And why the glass guys charge thousands of dollars for wow. these doors is beyond me. And they never get it right the first time anyway. Half the time to come out with the thing, the whole purpose is you come out and custom measure, and it should be exactly right because your walls are never 100% level and square, right? So the glass guy's got to account for all that. Still not right. Got to wait another week. House is always done. I have sold half of our houses without the doors there because it's the last thing that you do because you can't do it until the tile's 100% done. That's true. And like, we're going to sit around for two weeks, wait for the stupid door to come in, put it on the market, put a little sign on it, glass door coming, stupid thing sold, you can get credit. <laughs> and then your contractor taps the corner on the ground by mistake and it shatters. Heaven. Oh! Heaven. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Oh! And the first time they bring it out, it never works. It either gets broken or it's the wrong size. But just know that those stinking glass doors, if you get real uh, rainless custom cut glass doors, even for a small ch uh, shower like this, a two door panel, it can't be done for under like $1,100, $1,200. And some of the bigger guys out there, chains that you would call for glass would charge $2,000, 2500 wow. uh, for these doors. You can get a $500 door at the depot that's not too bad, but it won't be truly frameless, so it'll be kind of adjustable, so there'll be like little overlaps, and it'll look not bad, depends on the price of your house. Uh, you might be able to get away with it, but uh, we, we put in the good glass doors, but they are pricey. So a couple of before and afters of kitchens, just to kind of give you a sense of what happens in kitchens. Uh, this is a, a gut, but cabinets this, come out. In your, in your, go when you in. go over the spreadsheet, you'll call it, this will be a major remodel? This would be a major remodel, uh, but only because, if you can kind of see in the photo, uh, Top to bottom, this one had stuff that had to kind of get out of the way. That big brick thing in the back of the room in the before photo with the fireplace that was between the kitchen and the living room in this particular house. It was large and obnoxious, and I didn't I don't even know that it worked well. It uh, blocked a lot of light, so we ripped it out. Um, but that requires a little bit of framing, and then this particular kitchen was on two levels. We had to raise the floor to kind of get it all one level. So that's what ended up making this a major remodel. Uh, so Mark will go through a spreadsheet and we have like basic remodel, right? You go through yep. all the different, there's like seven levels? Uh, nowadays, we really only need like four or five. Because okay. I mean, uh, it's just kind of, it makes life easier than trying oh, yeah. to track assess. Have you found that spreadsheet helpful? Sure, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Now, by the way, I think he's tweaked. Did you tweak some things on that spreadsheet? He's got your spreadsheet. Oh, the numbers? Yeah. yeah. Um, so if that's an actual spreadsheet, be prepared to change the numbers to yeah. the square foot. Okay. You may already know that if you've done the math on some of your rehabs. Uh, some of the numbers are really not high enough to reflect current costs of stuff. What's going on? Depending on right. who your contract yes. is. Wow. So how much does that kitchen cost you? About 15000 So that kitchen was, uh, the kitchen was probably closer to 18, 19. Um, that's, there's a lot of stone there. That's uh, quartz and that has a big bar top on it. That's got a quartz backsplash. So the stone bill on that was probably was five, that the, was that the Vienna five house? Or six. That's I think that's in Annandale. Annandale. Oh, that's the Annandale. Uh, I never went into that house. So with appliances, you're looking at about twenty-two thousand already. Oh no, no, I'd say probably closer to like eighteen, nineteen with appliances. Oh, that's appliances. not a super fancy appliance package. Uh, oh, well. Looks nice, but that is probably a uh, Frigidaire. Just a nice Frigidaire appliance package. Uh, I don't know, but I guess the opinions will vary on stuff like appliances, but I shop my own open houses and kind of hang out in the back of the room while people are walking around. I've never heard anybody complain about our Frigidaire oh, appliance Frigidaire. package. Yeah. Like, nowhere says, oh, uh, it, 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 boy, it'd be have so you nice gone, to Have you ever gone to, like, have you ever gone to your open houses? To the see only time it? I did open house was my son went to open house. And that was the most depressing thing ever. <laughs> I was selling my house, I was living in a small house in Springfield, like right off of Ravensworth and Braddock Road. And my house was like only 1,500 square feet. I'll um, never forget, no, no people didn't know that I was like the agent because they started to read the comments. And they would walk in, and they would walk right out. They just like took one look and just walked right out. And then I'm like, I've been living here for 11 years. I was gonna refinance and stay here, you know what I mean? And they would just walk in. And it was like, there's nothing more depressing than doing an open house on your own house. 
Yeah. And they'll walk, and some one, one people like some people like I remember seeing a couple that they knew that I knew owned it, so they weren't gonna walk right out. I'll never forget it. They like actually like kind of humored me and like walked downstairs <laughs> and like <laughs> pretended like they <laughs> might be interested. And then like, oh, this is a really nice. Thing. We'll let you know. We'll let you yeah, know. Yeah, we'll let you know. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so look, there's an offer. That, don't worry, it's okay if we miss it. You know, it's a uh, we'll be okay. Can can be a little a little hurtful, but definitely eye opening if you shop your own open house when it's on the market for sale. So every once in a while, like, I'll slip in on Sunday, and just kind of hang out in the corner and see what people are saying about it. Uh, you'll find what people like and, and don't, and people can get really nitpicky. Uh, but I don't get nitpicked too much uh, about appliances, so we go with the decent frigid air appliance. And what, one of the things that we learned actually in that process was just just the pro tip. Uh, every house now we stage because we learned that the houses were that were not staged. Then people didn't have anything to look at, so they would nitpick things in the corner or finishes because that's all they had to look at. Yep. But when you create an environment mm -hmm. where people are now feeling the furniture and the flow, then they don't they don't. And another pro tip is if your house is kind of small, I just flipped the house in Milksville. The first I was trying to be cheap and save on the two thousand. Yeah. And every house too small. And I knew that they were going in, the rooms were too small. So I staged it for $1,800. And after that, never, there was no other comments yeah. about it being too, too small. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is the guy that convinced me and sold me on the power of staging is sitting in this room right now. And it's that guy right there with a the mask, Ooh. Sloan, right, right? And what happened was uh, there had been a client of ours that had renovated a condo. The condo was drop dead gorgeous. It was really nice. Cops showed that it should be selling for... I think it was like 250 or something like that. It was this little easy condo, but nothing. No, like people were coming, but no offers. And so I was telling the agent, I mean, telling the owner, they've got to drop it to the next price point, which is 225, going from 250 to 225. And someone was like, before you do that, stage it, wow. spend the two grand. And literally we did that, we spent the two grand, kept it at the same price, offer that day at full price, and I was sold. I was like, okay, there, there you go, right? How about pro tip for a condo? I have a condo listed right now in Alexandria. You guys are flipping a condo, even if the cops look good. They say great sports, uh, craftsmanship. There's only one problem. The laundry is on the main floor and they don't have an in thing laundry in Alexandria on Van Dorn. Yeah. And I guess people, all the agents that come, they're like, my clients aren't interested in buying quarters from the bank and going to the main laundry room and putting quarters in and pushing the shit down so that they can wash their clothes. They're just not, we don't care how nice your condo is. It's a non-starter. Yeah. So that's Do any, of, are, are any laundry machines allowed in the condo? Yes, yeah, so it's gonna cost about $10,000 to yeah. do it. And you gotta find a place to put it inside yeah. the unit. Especially, so you know, the, the consumers change, right? Everything is about convenience. Like back in the, like I just did a post where my grandfather, my uncle who's 95 years old, they lived in a house, nine kids, right? In a one, uh, what, two bedroom house with one bathroom. That's, they put up with things like being able to get quarters and put it in. But today, uh, -uh. so. Just a quick question mm -hmm. while we were talking about appliances. Um, the, uh, with this house that I'm getting ready, I, I'm, having a choice between like getting totally brand new appliances or there might be an opportunity to get uh, some appliances that are just two years old or less that are refurbished. Mm -hmm. Either way, it would be a, a suite of stainless steel appliances. What's your take on being able to say, you know, brand new appliances versus like, you know, newer, like, uh, or newish. Newish. I mean, I'm just wondering, I don't want to yeah. ask this by this. It, you know? Yeah, you, I wouldn't, I don't think we ever say we never use the word new, new. Yeah. updated. Right. Uh, right. It's really you gotta be really careful with the word new. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would only use like I mean I when I used to I say if it's not brand new, I say uh, newer or new, if, whatever. But if but just in terms of the actual choice of which to put in what, what if you can establish that they are less than five years old, then I would say it is worth saying the year that they are. Because every appliance usually yeah. has some kind of data manufacturer on it. So if it's a 2018 refrigerator, put 2018 refrigerator. That sounds close enough to most people uh, that you're going to get some credit for that. And absolutely, if they look good, buy them used. I, I yeah. So you'd be okay with that rather yeah, than just sure. going to the suite of brand new. Yeah. I, I or just buy them a home warranty. 
And, and that's the other thing. We, we buy people a home warranty, whether they're new or not, because it's just a good idea. People Insurance. like to see it. That's like 500 bucks. Another pro tip to buy this will have it. If you guys are buying a condo from a wholesaler and they give you a clicker, don't assume that a condo in Mass Ave has a parking space. I had a buddy of mine just do this. He bought it from Market Pro. He had a clicker, so he assumed that it had a parking space. We went to list it, and they were ready to close. And like, hey, where's our parking space? So the guy gets a clicker, and the manager, I guess it said, like the one that on the main floor, he said, man, she's like, yeah, every unit has a parking space. Don't worry about it, mm -hmm. right? So they go to close. And it's like a two hundred seventy-five. Yeah, but you got to verify. Or maybe it was three hundred something. Maybe I forgot what it was. It was like about mm -hmm. fifty days ago. So we go to close, and guess what? The condo has no parking. Yeah, Even the though the they gave you a clicker, and the uh, the manager said that everyone has a parking space. So, pro tip: you find a condo from anyone, especially a wholesaler, please verify that. Verify in your HOA documents, mm -hmm. right, that it has all the things that it says it has. Yeah, we've run into that before. We've had that issue. Yeah, we've had that issue. Yeah, yeah. We run into that. So we need to decrease the price by fifteen thousand. That will last. So you can probably work with the condo and use the space for less than $200. And she didn't care. She was like, what if we sell it? I don't have a parking space. Either reduce the price or I walk. Yeah. There's 26 condos available yeah. around it. Yeah, that's the other thing. The condo market in D.C. right now is what? Right? So, uh -huh. yeah. Which is interesting, right? You're like, hey, you think everything's flying off the shelf? No. Condos in D.C. are not. They're sitting there. They're sitting. There's a lot of competition. So I backed up real quick just okay. to go over a couple other material things just when we're looking at cost per square foot. So you kind of follow along with what I'm saying is stuff to pay for. That uh, bathroom, you may notice, the one on the right-hand side of the floor doesn't have a shower in it. So this was a bathroom where we moved a wall out to make a full bath from what was a powder bath. Uh, that then is part of that full renovation number when it's a major remodel, we're having to move some plumbing around, move some electric. That's all permittable work. Uh, so that is a definite difference between a full remodel and just a light renovation. Light renovation, we're just taking what's there, replacing it, putting new stuff in. I'm not moving anything. I'm not replumbing anything. Sometimes you don't need permits. Depends on your jurisdiction. Don't take my word for it. But if you're just swapping out a toilet, you don't need a permit for that. So that will be a, a major differentiator on a cost per square foot basis because you can get into all kinds of things which you have to start pulling plans and permits and get inspections and then upgrade other things because now you touch this thing. Uh, so be aware of that as a, a large differentiator in cost. And then as far as the materials go and showers, we're piling almost all the time. Uh, and this one even has it's a little visible a tile floor. I don't know what other people are doing. I've got half a mind to maybe do more just solid acrylic pans in showers, even in master bathrooms and just tile. I don't know that it's so much better looking to have an actual tile shower floor for the extra thousand, twelve hundred dollars it costs to actually hand form a pan and tile and grout, seal and do all that other stuff. And just getting a nice new white acrylic pan and putting a really nice tile job on top of it. We've done it. Well let's be ways. honest, right now in this market, if it's clean and it just fresh. looks fresh, yeah. it's gonna fly. Yeah. Right. I, I think maybe that's where it is. Maybe I'm, I'm relying on the fact that it's they're all selling anyway. So I look back on it, I'm like, well, why did we take the extra three or four weeks to do all this other stuff? We could have saved the time and saved the money, even if you lost, lost, didn't get that incremental or whatever. How much more were we gonna get for the tile shower? And it takes, it costs well over a thousand bucks in time and material. So the interesting thing though, is that, uh, you know, cause it did take you two or three months or two or three weeks longer I mean, this is not how you look at it. But what we're what we're experiencing right now is not normal. So those that are just getting involved in real estate, real estate investing, like what we're experiencing right now is not normal. And so the fact that it took you an extra month, you actually made more money. You're right, but we made we would have made money doing nothing. Yeah. Through market appreciation, and you you clearly don't want to count on that. So what we do want to do though is is make the right improvements, but only the most necessary improvements. That will have the highest return. So I'm I'm kind of on the fence now on these 
tiled shower floors, but my numbers would allow for tiled shower, tiled shower floor, you know, fancy overpriced piece of glass uh, on the shower door. And in the kitchen, uh, these are, as I said, a couple weeks to get them. Maybe not right now because everything's jacked up cabinets, but not custom cabinets. So we order cabinets in increments of three, right? They come in 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 33, 36, so forth and so on. And then we use filler in between that where we have to, where there's any gaps and that math doesn't work, right? These are not fully custom cabinets. They look pretty good, but you can get a lot done with just some filler uh, and some decent quartz or granite. I think we haven't done granite in well over a year. It's all quartz now, because if you don't know, you can get the look of any kind of nice natural granite or stone made out of a man-made material that's much more durable, harder to break, and more stain resistant, easier to fix when you do damage it. Uh, it is the current superior material, and because it's more popular, the costs come down. So if you were looking to save money on a renovation, by the way, um, Carrera marble that you know, used to be the gold standard of pretty kitchen counter <coughs> stuff is cheaper than quartz, cheaper than granite. It's terrible to live with. It's gorgeous, but it's a god awful material to actually live with if you were going to maintain it. And I feel kind of bad sometimes putting it in and like foisting it on people. I've just given you a lifetime of maintenance with this thing uh, where quartz for now more money uh, is much, much better, much more durable material. So uh, you want to save some money though, use, uh, use Carrera. Uh, it's pretty, but nasty. Uh, <laughs> regular old, uh, $3,500 appliance packages and you'll see recess lights, the recess lights in kitchens and bathrooms, almost, uh, exclusively pendant lights over islands. Uh, that's not really expensive stuff to do. It might cost you a hundred bucks between the light and the wiring. Uh, to put in a pendant light, but it's kind of like the jewelry bits in your kitchen. Uh, you'll get, I think, more than your money back. So now, that. now my impatient self comes out and says, Mara, this is great, but how do I, how do I estimate this thing? How do I estimate the Says the guy that prattles on about other stuff. It's, I'm getting it. <laughs> so <laughs> more, uh, more shots. Uh, this makes the point about the staging, uh, though. Uh, if that staging furniture weren't in there, uh, what people would go through, they'd walk around and, and notice the gaps between like the baseboards and your uh, hardwood floors. Or they'd notice all the creaky, clacky bits that you get when you have hardwood floors. Stage the thing, people will walk in. I get it. It's a living room. That's where the TV would go. That's where my couch would fit. I see what's happening here. Cool. Let me go look at another room. Uh, empty and unstaged, you get nitpicks. You know what's funny, Rob? I would have just painted that fireplace and kept it moving. Could have done that. Uh, that I fireplace was a bear. Uh, yeah, it was a big modern style. Yeah, yeah, I love that fireplace, right? But That's why I did 40 ounces. Because uh, I just keep it moving. I'm like, this we got four weeks. I don't care how it gets done. This thing is four That strategy work is working beautifully yeah. right now. Dude, but he's an artist. Like seriously, Mark, I'm not saying like you, like you have a really good eye and you do great stuff. And, uh, he's the guy that never, normally I, walks in. I'm like, what are we gonna do with the existing structure? Yeah. Right? No, I, I definitely care too much about what the thing looks like. Uh, and I'm not the most care. There are people out there that, that spend even more time trying to get details right. But that's not a bad thing. It might not make you the most money, but what's wrong with enjoying it too? Yeah. Like I thought it looked better. I thought it was fun to do it. We got to take a sledgehammer to a, a fireplace. So that had some psychic benefit <laughs> <laughs> beyond the money, right? Do you so, think your own you know, selections? By and large, uh, we use designers to kind of guide a lot of the stuff. But every once in a while, like, yeah, I'm not really feeling that tile. Let's try something else and I'll at least get other options. Uh, and have some kind of an opinion. He's got a really good eye. So if you had kept the fireplace, what color would you have painted it? White or black, something kind of white, black, or gray. Something yeah, kind of white or black. I thought it would have made it match with the uh, kitchen. Uh, yeah, it would have been would have been fine. But then you'd have a fireplace that I didn't know whether or not it worked. It was vented up through the attic, and that, that was a bit of a of an issue by the time we got there, and people wanted to inspect that. So uh, upside down. Side. But no, it would have saved money to just paint the thing. Uh, but I enjoyed the end product and the process of doing it. So whether it made me more money or not, 
It made him happy. It made me happy. And it's part of his happiness philosophy. That's right. I have a happiness doctrine. If it doesn't make me happy, I shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. So it's not just about money. So then it's true. that is what uh you know good pro tip by the way it's not just about the money if this you, this is if you're just doing it for money go find something else to do because it will drive you nuts sometimes right uh you have to have moments of joy in anything that you're doing to overcome the moments of pain right uh, but, but the hard is the moment money no doubt about it uh so point is we are trying to get from house needing a lot of work to the, the finished product in the shortest amount of time, the least amount spent, and figure out what that's going to be without driving all over town and asking my contractors and designers and other people to drive all over town to look at this stuff. So having done a few hundred of these things, I know that LVP that we're using now, three dollars thirty-nine cents a foot. I know about how long it takes a guy to put in a square foot of that stuff, so I know how much it's going to cost me to put that in. I now know how much it takes to demo a fireplace that goes up to the ceiling, so I know all right how many hours it's going to take for somebody to do that times money, so we can kind of do the math on that. How long does it take to paint? How long does it take to um, refinish a hardwood floor, or put down carpet, or change out the rail, or just paint the old rail? So that is the basis for what we're about to get into is just doing a bunch of that stuff. And I've come up with cost per square foot for the things that we typically do in these typical houses based on whether they're actual guts and I got to move some stuff around and pull permits and get plans and that kind of thing. Or cabinet comes out, cabinet goes in, the best thing I can find within you know, 48 hours or after box store. So that's where the stuff is coming from. And the point of it is to allow me to, when a deal comes in, how many square feet is this house? We're going to get a reliable number for the square feet. Give me a couple of photos. All right, plug in some stuff. This should cost Google me- Google Maps, right? You 45 know, grand. Yeah. yeah, well, I'll talk about where you can get the information, but like I got 1,200 square feet. This should cost me 45 grand roughly to renovate. Maybe it'll be 40, maybe it'll be 50. But if I guess 45, to Jed's point, I need to know kind of what the outside risk is just to make offers. You know, five grand here or there should be fine. If you're doing a deal that's only got $5,000 and if $5,000 makes or breaks it, that's not a good deal, right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get something accurate to within five or 10 grand on a house that we're gonna buy for 300,000, spend 70,000 to renovate and sell for five. Accurate Would you say, like, you know, out of hundreds of deals you've done, like you, I remember you told me one time, like you've always come within just a few percentage points of that initial estimate, just yeah. from using the spreadsheet. Yeah, usually, yeah, because yeah. we do the same thing and we use the same stuff. So yeah. it really is just if you're gonna change out all the floors and you're gonna gut all the bathrooms and you're gonna paint the whole house and you're gonna refinish every bit of hardwood that you've got, change all the carpet, it's gonna cost you forty-four dollars a square foot. We've just done it enough that that's within a couple of bucks what it ends up costing. Show me the spreadsheet. So the more you know, the better, right? So get every every bit of information you can, whether it's from a wholesale or a thing you got online or something that you found. The more photos is better so that you can kind of double check and make sure that there's not enormous fireplace in the room. Well, I might need to take that down and that's not necessarily baked in. <laughs> or it's got a terrible roof and I got to replace the roof. Get more information if you can. Uh, more information is always better, but this works for me you know, within five or ten grand. So, uh, oh, yeah, that uh, not to say Jad's out of the room. Excellent. Don't do what he does. Don't buy a house without ever seeing it at all. The purpose of this is not so that you can just say, meh, this, this should be fine. Here, take my money and I'll see what it is when I get there. Go check it out or send someone to go check it out and make sure that this is at least within the realm of, of reality. But you use this process to quickly know when something makes no sense at all. I've got it, they sent it to me, they're asking 500 grand, I can see what it needs, I'm gonna be in it for six, and it's worth 550. This is not a deal. Move on to the next one, right? That's what this process is for, to kind of filter out your, your leads. Uh, more before and after kind of stuff, this is showing like paint and staging and railings. We get our rails from a place called Cheap Stair Parts. Uh, out of Texas, so for like a couple thousand dollars, you can change all the rails out and put in the real cool wrought iron rails with the nice new 
uh, staying well right. Okay. Uh, Kayla was asking me about that today. I said it might be too expensive to do that in a new Airbnb. But you said I I consider okay. it looks so much better to okay. do the wrought iron rails and just the, the okay. wood chips. Cheap, what's it called again? Um, cheap stair parts. Cheap stair parts. Yep, that's the, like the name of the uh, the outfit that sells them. Uh, outside stuff, right? This is a, just a little bit of a deck. This house is largely been cleaned, painted, and this particular one sliders came out and French doors went in. Uh, but we just kind of framed to the opening we had, nothing custom, I don't custom do any kind of door or window thing, usually, unless it's getting like an addition. Uh, all right, so, important. that's kind of what they look like. So what does it cost? So I've got levels of, of renovation, four of which are the ones that we kind of end up using almost all of the time. First one is what we call rental grade. In a rental grade house that we know we are just going to rent back out, most of the time, I just fix what's broken. It's almost never a full gut renovation unless it's a complete disaster when we buy it and that's all been priced in. But most of the time, I, I see people make a lot of mistakes here, especially first time investors. They over improve their rental um, instead of just fixing what's broken. Like right. You absolutely should not be completely painting, retiling yeah, the bathroom. Painting, of changing rental. hardware, changing lights, like fixing what's broken. Like that, that's what you want to do. Right. So if that's what you're doing and you don't need to completely gut renovate, you're doing paint, carpet, and maybe <laughs> repairing uh, or swapping out one appliance or two, about $18 a square foot. So whatever that amounts to on a, I'd have to get Make sure you okay with your spreadsheet. Do the math. Uh, yeah, uh, so all the numbers you're probably gonna see here, uh, Coleman, are about 15% higher than they were yeah. uh, last time. This time last year. year. Yep. So, uh, 18 with average, uh, <laughs> townhouse about 1800 square feet, mm -hmm. give or take a kind of finished area. Um, 32,400 if you're renovating the whole thing, and that's probably, yeah, probably no, that, that's, that, that's, that's a bigger cap, yeah, uh, to get something kind of rental grade. And what these numbers do is provide you safety, right? So they're not skewed downwards, they're skewed upwards a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, that that should come up here in a minute too. So are these numbers the uh, on the screen on, on each slide? Are these the updated numbers yep. or, or updated numbers? Yep. So if you've heard if you've heard me talk about this any time before tonight, the numbers I'm using tonight are fifteen percent higher than they were. We might be able to get a copy of the updated spreadsheet somehow. Uh, sure. Yeah, of course. Uh, but it would just be a matter of changing that that number in the spread cell from, in that case, 15 to 18. This was, I think, 30, and it's now 35 for what I'm calling a simple rehab. Uh, so the simple rehab is replace all fixtures in existing locations. New kitchens, new bathroom, paint, flooring, switches, wall plates, fixtures, you know, lights, pendant lights, but only where they exist. Uh, nothing new. This is usually not permittable uh, because I'm just taking down a fixture and putting in a new fixture. Again, your mileage may vary, your jurisdiction may uh, be different, but by and large, if I'm just taking a toilet, and putting a new toilet, taking out a vanity, putting a new vanity, taking out a light, putting a new light, uh, you're in, you're out. Uh, you don't get plans and permits for that kind of work. Uh, so interior paint, uh, entry grade carpet or hardwood or LVP uh, in these cases, uh, if we're using tile uh, anywhere, it's like the $2, 2 $3 a square foot tile. You can get nice tile for $0.69 cents a square foot at floor and decor, right? So two bucks is more than enough for an average tile number uh, in your average bathroom. Um, and then that number would allot for $4,000 worth of one other thing besides kitchen what cabinets come out. Stuff? There's going to be something, right? There's always something. One half of the HVAC unit needs to be replaced. The roof needs to be done. The driveway's got some kind of problem. The deck is in rough shape. We've got to redo the top of the deck. This allots for that few thousand dollar other random thing. Surprise! To come up, right? So, so this surprise, is right? <laughs> this is your same. This is your same 1,800 square foot uh, Herndon Weston <laughs> townhouse at thirty-five dollars a square foot. 63,000. So I'm saying your budget is $63,000 and I can take the average three bedroom, two and a half bath house, take 
all of the kitchen and bathroom apart, put all new stuff in there, paint it, upgrade all of the flooring, clean up the outside, and then still either put a new roof on it or change one part of the roof AC <laughs> or fix a janky deck or fix like a bad concrete leave on something out front. Uh, that, that works. Uh, everything new. Everything new. In its current you, existing spot. In its current location. If you walk in, it's all gonna look new, right? So you don't have, like, if you knew the roof was needed mm -hmm. and it also needed the base, the base, the simple rehab. You're not saying, okay, 35 square foot plus 12K for a roof or whatever. When or I'm you're, you're including that in the 35 mm -hmm. square foot. So when I'm using this, which is again, for someone has sent me a house and said, would you like to buy this house yeah. for $300,000 in Warrington or whatever it, it is? Yeah, yeah. I'm not driving to it. I haven't seen gotcha. it. I've hopefully gotten some photos. Best case scenario, it's been sold before so I can look at an older listing and get 20 something photos there. If it's coming from a wholesaler, a good one will send you a couple dozen photos when they went out to look at the house, right? So I've got something to kind of go on, but that's pretty much it. 35 bucks kind of is gonna be my number. At this point, I won't worry about the extra little thing. If I get the deal, then I'll run out to the thing. If I get some, even if I get a good response to the offer, all right, so my numbers come out. I should pay 275. You're asking for 275. And they're like, eh, all right, can you go to 280? Fine. Then, then you run out. I've got a lot of them, right? If somebody's willing to take my money and we're within five or 10 grand. Then go and take a look at the thing and say, oh, crap. Rob has run me down to, I don't know where it was, uh, Fredericksburg. Uh, to find that the house is literally <laughs> falling down. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, man. Sorry. That's a $66 a square foot wasn't going to do it because this house is condemned. Uh, that'll happen. They told me. That'll happen. They, they needed 100000 in Reno. Right. Right? It needed a new okay. house. I did so, the math on that. So, and it, and it, and it works. wholesalers will do that to you. So what I'm trying to do, though, is get rid of the ones that aren't even smart enough to lie to me up front and give me good information. I know that that's, that, that works or doesn't work uh, based on what they're asking at, at that price per square foot. Quick price. announcement, because yep. I can see that my phone's going to die here. And those that are on uh, Facebook Live, you're probably going to get kicked off. What I would recommend is that you go to the Grid Investor Community and uh, there, there's a link, I believe, that yeah. either you or Jess put in that you could actually catch this. So, on the, so Facebook group. On the Facebook group. Yeah, go to yeah. the Facebook group and yeah. you'll find so the link there. The Grid so. Investor Community. Yeah. Or on Meetup. On, on Meetup. Meetup. On yeah. Meetup, the link is there now on Meetup. Yeah. Cool. So that was the, uh, the simple rehab, right? I'm just rehabbing what's there. I'm not not remodeling, nothing is getting too terribly fixed. So the next uh, level is the basic remodel. Uh, now we're trying to make some kind of improvement to this thing, right? So the house, walls. Right, the house is like closed off, the typical kitchen with just one little uh, opening in the dining room. People like a more open concept, right? So we can take a wall down, we can put a bar top in, uh, maybe remove, a fireplace. A wall, remove a fireplace. Do something to try to improve uh, the layout of a place. When you do that, you're going to have to usually move some plumbing and electric around. If it had like an older kitchen and we're trying to kind of like expand it a little bit, now we're having to move plumbing around. That means you need plans, you need permits. Uh, so you have to account for those extra costs. Um, and then I still want to include some extra money. So I think this one says I've got about $8,000 uh, in extra stuff because now this house uh, I want to make sure I've covered the full HVAC system and or a full roof and or a driveway, usually for a slightly larger house. And a slightly larger house means the roof is going to cost a little bit more money. Also, some comments. When you look at these numbers and you analyze them, this is when you're actually outsourcing all of the work. There's like definite the do-it-yourselfers that are like, I could do this for less or I can go to Home Depot and buy the stuff and take it, right? But the problem is you're now spending your time on the least productive, out, out of productive time, right? You should be hiring professionals to do that work so that you can go find other deals because that's the business that you're in. You're in the marketing and sales business. 
not in the construction business. Right. Yep. So, unless you're in the construction business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I've done where I've only been there twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's within, I've, been, I've done houses I've never been in. This poor guy If it's within a half an hour of Reston, I would uh, renovate your house at these prices. So you can find contractors that will work within these numbers. So that basic remodel that tries to add a little value by kind of expanding and massaging some spaces, opening things up where we can, um, turning a powder room bath into a full bath if it makes sense to do in your foyer. Probably not a great idea, but if you've got powder room in the basement and you can easily, just semi-easily for me, move a wall over, put a hole in the floor, connect some plumbing, get a shower in here, that would add some value uh, and may be worth doing. Uh, this would allow for a little bit of that at 50 bucks a square foot, which means your 1,800 square foot uh, Fairfax area townhouse is a $90,000 budget. Uh, now you're doing a lot to that. 90000 90, uh, and normally you're not moving that much around in a townhouse, let's be honest. It's normally the single family homes. Right. 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 Yep. Uh, but there are 1,800 square foot uh, single families out there too. Yeah. A lot That's of them Sterling and uh, so, Woodbridge. So if you're putting a, a room on top of a, a two car garage, mm -hmm. uh, that's like 350 square feet garage. Mm -hmm. right? So you want to raise the roof and add square footage that doesn't exist. Right. This next slide is for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last one, right? This That's is, right. This is That's the right. major remodel. This, this is, is the, the major models. remodel. So in the major remodel, I am attempting to add something that doesn't exist to this house. So maybe it's a room over the garage. Maybe it's extending the kitchen um, on a, you know, a block foundation to kind of put square footage where it currently isn't add a bathroom where it just doesn't exist in the basement, right? So a lot of jacking of the floors and moving around and stuff. Com reconfiguring the floor space. We did this once on a house because it was a really big amount of square footage, but for whatever reason, they made rooms really big and hallways really small, and like a shotgun house, oh, yeah. really, really long. Um, it just was weirdly configured. So we just took it all down to the studs reframed it, moved some rooms around, widened the hallway. It was really, really nice and more than worth doing, but that required an architect and some plans and some real thinking and heavy lifting of moving stuff around. Uh, so that is a major remodel. Uh, so that's kind of everything that you saw in the basic remodel. Plus we're gonna almost always, when you're fussing around with you know, walls and adding square footage, you're gonna do the roof because you're ripping stuff off. The HVAC is almost always going to need to be done. If you're adding a bathroom where it doesn't exist, you've got to get ducting to it. By the time you've done that, you decide the old HVAC is shot. So now we got to put in a new HVAC and, and duct some other stuff. This could be if you're in an urban area to put a kitchen in the basement to make a rentable unit, right? Uh, you've got to do significantly more plumbing and electric and get other plans and other permits and things done to have that rentable unit. But that could be worth tons of money to have a rentable space put into your property. Um, so this would allow for that. It adds an element to the property that wasn't already there when you got it, right? So I'm saying that's $66 a square foot. And we're not doing that in a townhouse. So let's say that's in a uh, your Fairfax single family house and it's got a two car garage, but you could put a room over top of it extend the hallway and now you've got either a really nice master over the garage or two more bedrooms out over this garage that weren't otherwise there. So a 2,400 square foot finished area at $66 a square foot is so 158400 is your, your budget for what's starting off as a 2,400 square foot house, but you're anticipating doing something bigger like adding that square footage or putting a kitchen downstairs right. to make it rentable, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, and that's so yeah, that, that's okay. That is an okay number. It depends on what you're what you're trying to add. This is not going to get you in a true addition, right? But building over a garage where the walls are already there, and I'm literally just taking off one roof, yeah. adding another roof eight feet up, and then putting in walls, you can oftentimes accomplish that. But this again does not let you say, all right, on this two-level house in Springfield, I'm going to put a two-level addition on the back extend the kitchen on the main floor and put bedrooms out of the top floor. 
want to do that, 150 bucks a foot is maybe a good wow. number to use for actual addition construction on, on your house. Uh, but if you're going to get into that level of work, this isn't, that's not what this is for. This is for our regular rehab. Uh, if you're going to start putting additions on, price that work separately. Yeah, you get a pop top. We've got a good top. friend of ours that just, he does a lot of pop tops in Arlington. Right. Great so, business, by the way. That's a really good way to make money now where you can't just extract money from the house that's there, right? Because the values are so high, we have to add square footage to these houses. You either addition, pop top, tear down, something. Uh, but these numbers are not relevant to that at all. We'll have a discussion maybe another time about new construction costs. But you want to start with something, 150 bucks a square foot gets you a cheap addition uh, on the back of an average house in Northern Virginia. Uh, so those are kind of the, the four rough guess numbers I use when somebody has brought me a deal and I need to say, what about should I be spending on this? What is this probably going to cost me to renovate? Plug it into my thing, figure out what the ARV of the house is. It's going to be worth this when I sell it. They're asking this, I'm going to spend this much for it, this much closing costs, do some math. And then is there a deal at the end of that? How close are we? Are we even on the same planet. And if the number is negative, then I either tell them, thanks, this one's not for me, or if I feel like you know, wasting time to spend an offer, write up an offer or an email, that's like a text. Like, all right, we're like $100,000 offer. I can go to two. Tell me what you think. Somebody else will buy it, no problem. The point is though, I'm just trying to get something rough spat out that I can know if I'm even on the same planet with my seller. And then if we're even remotely close, then I invest time, then I go to the house, make sure that these numbers work, come up with a real budget, discover what's really so valuable to be able to, you know, for those that are agents, right, to be able to, to, to now from, uh, from an educated standpoint, be like, hey, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a major remodel, it's like $66 per square foot. Now you look really smart, mm -hmm. right? And a basic rental grade is going to be $18 a square foot. And then he's going to show you where you gather all the square footage information because that's really important. Because sometimes people leave off square footage. So estimating square footage, um, the place that I start with is whatever data I've got in the MLS. I'm hoping that whoever put that information in the MLS tried to be somewhat accurate about it. They do pull from the public record. Agents can supplement that record in the MLS listing. Um, but usually if you see things like above ground finished or uh, above ground FIN or total square footage, some reference to total finished, that kind of thing, that's the, the number that I'm, I'm looking for. I want to find out the finished square footage of the house. So when I say a average 2,400 square foot house in Fairfax, that's probably not the total square footage that you would see on the building plan from the builder who built it. They include things like the garage that's not finished square footage or the mechanical room that's not finished square footage or a sunroom might not technically be considered finished square footage for the purpose of the tax record that is created when you build a house and you take those plans and you send them to the county and say, this is what I want to build. They take it down because that's what they base your taxes on and the taxes the builder pays and the taxes future owner pays. I'm looking for that number under total square foot or finished square footage from the MLS. And if I can't find it in the MLS, then I go to the tax record. And most every municipality in the country has some record because they all charge some kind of real estate tax. You guys all got your tax bills. You Everybody know. gets tax bill, right? Every house in the country gets tax bill. So somebody somewhere has some basis for how much they think that house is worth and what they're charging for taxes on it. It's usually based on some kind of square footage number. So go to your tax record, and in the tax record, you're looking for things like total building area, or again, total finished square feet. Um, if it says something like base square feet, base square feet usually refers to the first floor of a multi-floor house. So if the base square foot of the house is 1,200, I would bet you dollars to donuts that it is 2,400 total square feet because the base square feet is usually what you see on the first floor, the basement underneath of most houses in the last 50 years is roughly usually the same size as the floor above it. 
you get to like second floor, then you can get like projections and bays and stuff. But most foundations are roughly the size of, of their first floor. So base oftentimes refers to that first floor. If it's got a basement, double it. If it's got a second floor, triple it, right? Second floor and a basement. Uh, but base usually means that first floor. If it's got a reference to other rooms, uh, basement, addition, converted garage, well, a lot of times the tax record will actually make reference to other rooms and they'll have a little square footage next to that. Great. Take the thing that they gave you over here under base or, or uh, square footage building area or whatever it is, and then add whatever else you can see in the record for the basement or the addition or the sunroom or the converted garage, whatever they've done to it. The tax, the, the municipality is pretty good at getting that information. They're always checking anytime a house there's sells. There's people, there's people that whose only job is to, right. is to start looking at that. Like you'll get calls that will say, hey, we'll get calls all the time from, you know, the, the tax from the county that says, can you tell us a little bit about what was done to this property? Yep. Right. They're looking for that information because they want accurate tax records. They want to tax you for it, right? Uh, so usually, more or less, you can trust uh, what you can find in the tax record. Uh, where it becomes less accurate, in my experience, is in uh, cities or farther out rural uh, locations, just because in both ends of that spectrum, they've got other things to deal with and they're not focused as much on their uh, assessor's uh, job. So in the city, you can find row houses that had additions put on them you know, 40 years ago, and it's not reflected in the tax record. It's on there. Well, was that that can cause a whole other issue. It might have never been done permanent. They, right? they can get a whole other issue because sometimes it got done without permits, and that's why it's not in the tax record. You'll deal with that after you buy it. That's a different discussion as far as figuring out what's actually there. Just know that in cities, tax record sometimes not always accurate, and farther out, sometimes not always accurate for kind of the same reasons. People build stuff without permits because it's farther out, and they know nobody's looking, and they don't care. And the municipality out there is just not as with it to kind of go around and poll the realtors, pay attention to the house sales, and update their own records. So we just know that your mileage might vary a little bit outside of kind of the suburb kind of areas. Yeah. So. Um, when when actually plugging into your formula, do you want to then do you want to be using the total finished square feet, like including it? Excuse me, the total square feet including unfinished, or, or in other words, are you including unfinished square footage? Uh, like like the unfinished half of a basement yeah. great in your in great your great question framework. the answer is no i'm trying not to include unfinished square footage so the numbers that i'm giving you when i say it's 66 a square foot for my major remodel um while i say that's leaving you eight thousand dollars to replace the hvac the hvac is in an unfinished space so if there's unfinished space I don't try to find out about it. I've accommodated that by saying, oh, I'm going to put uh, a new HVAC in there. But other than that, I'm not finishing the mechanical rooms, right? So I'm mostly this concerned is... about the rooms that are finished spaces that need paint and carpet and tile and lights and plumbing and stuff. Right? I'm just looking at the time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Hey, see, final thoughts. Time is. Final thoughts. Time, time is coming. Sure. So. Again, that square footage in the tax record might not necessarily be 100% accurate, but we don't need it to be 100% accurate. I'm not risking my life and life savings on this. This is just to get a good rough number. Uh, so the tax records are usually pretty good for a good rough number if you can't get to the MLS. MLS should be pulling from the tax record and hopefully an agent at some point has updated it if they found out other additional information about the house, which they usually want to do because they're trying to sell it. So if they know it's got extra square footage, they'll usually include it, hopefully somewhat accurately, and they don't say that it's got like 3,000 more square feet than it does. That doesn't happen all that often. Most agents get it relatively correct. Google Maps, uh, Google Maps is your friend. Google Maps is definitely your friend, right? Everybody knows that now Google's got a street view, right? So you can actually see the fronts of a tremendous percentage of the uh, country where you can actually see the street view in front of this house and get a good sense of all right, the tax record says it's 1,200 square feet, but I can clearly see this thing's got three stories on it. Looks like somebody's done something here if I've got the right house. So do that to make sure that you're uh, kind of somewhat- Google active. Earth, too. You guys use Google Earth? Google Earth, yep, even uh, can be helpful because they've got those satellite views uh, where you can kind of zoom in in some parts of the world and get really good satellite views 
of what is going on on a property. So mm -hmm. if you know it's incorrect, do something about it. Oh, so take it off shit. Oh, I feel like it's low. We got like low. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, so those are kind of the, the final thoughts on uh, on trying to maintain accuracy. Use other information if you can. If you guys want up. access to the spreadsheet, like send us an email, right? Mark at the Maybe that's the best place. Right. Yeah, so these numbers uh, I've just put into a spreadsheet that uh, also hopefully that you account for the typical closing costs in some areas. And Maryland, Virginia, D.C. HOAs and utilities and closings, commissions and that kind of stuff. Along with a cell where you can just say, I think this is going to be the level <laughs> one, and then it does the math for you. This is going to be a level four. I know it's I plugged in the square footage over here, and I think this is level four. It just does the math for you, and you can import that. And then you have, I've noticed also you have like an adjusted risk number on there. Is that your <laughs> yep. 4,000 or 8,000? Yep. Okay. A whole other discussion about why you would adjust your offering price to account for risk. Uh, but yeah, that's in there. That's in there too. Okay. Cool. Uh, Colvin, you've been playing with it. Do you have any questions on the spreadsheet or anything? like? Yeah. So, I mean, in you know, I was looking at the four different levels here, and it seemed like with the numbers you're given per square foot were for like resale grade. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious how you like. I mean, I guess the answer would be to get get the spreadsheet from you, but I'm curious about the rental grade um, numbers versus resale. Yeah, I, so my new rental number, just to pull something out of the air, is roughly 18 bucks a square foot. But it just with rental, it really depends. You're usually trying to do the bare minimum to get it in. Good, clean, rentable, decent condition, right? Sometimes, though, we buy something knowing that it's going to be a rental that also needs a full gut. If it needs a full gut, 18 bucks isn't going to do it. But then hopefully that 35 number, right, if it's a rental, it shouldn't be moving walls. We're not trying to make spaces or bathrooms where they don't already exist unless it's abundantly clear that we need to, converting that half bath to a second bath makes a big deal because it makes a place that rentable that otherwise isn't, then use the remodel number instead of the, the rehab number, right? If you're doing an Airbnb, that that completely skews this. You know Correct. What I'm saying, right? Yeah. This is not an Airbnb. Because when you're, I mean, now what you're doing is going for a completely different deal, right? And you're, and we, you know, we don't have that. We need I mean, I, I would say the, the remodel numbers are probably good yeah. to use, uh, okay. but the the other large expense with uh, a short-term rental is furnishing. So that's not, I don't have a furnishing number in here. You can spend thousands of dollars uh, on furnishing, but the finishes are probably a, about right. With an Airbnb, you're just trying to get high interest, high, high visual value with minimal spend. So it's not really a difference in cost, it's just a difference in the aesthetic. material, the yeah. aesthetic, right? You're you're actually making some aesthetic choices that we don't make in a regular rehab because I don't want everybody in the world to come in and like it and no one to hate it. With an Airbnb, yeah, you, you want people to love it. it. You well, want people to think this is cool, that's different. I hadn't seen that before. Shock right? or it's insta worthy. Or, yeah. right. What's that? Insta worthy. Insta worthy. Yeah. That's yeah. it. So people can take a yeah. picture. <laughs> <laughs> it, it may be something that someone will say, I would never live here, but it's cool to stay for a night because it's you know it's a neat different thing. Totally different than what you're trying to I, I just can't wait for him to say um one of the one of the contract gives him a price and said, Well, I went to Rob and Mark's meet up and they said that this is supposed to be eight. <laughs> and they even gave me the updated terms, and I just don't think that this is going to work for me. No black toll mark and rob. I just can only imagine the conversation this poor guy is going to have. Well, or when he does a flip, or when he does a flip, and he's like, well, Rob and Mark told me that this is $50 a square foot. Well, did you, did you guys actually, a good uh, thing to just do is go back to your last renovations, mm -hmm. last two. And and look at the total square foot and be like, okay, what was, what did we do? Did we do a basic? Did we do a major? And then what was your price per square foot? And you guys might find in your area, in Winchester, from where like that, that number might be less. Right. And then you could start adjusting. You start mm -hmm. creating what we created here in Fairfax. But well, all of this is a house of cards. If your contractor sucks, I did a house in Annapolis. Guy was licensed. Everyone tagged him on Facebook. He's amazing. 
backsplash is crooked, tiling is leaking, faucets haven't been removed, payment for a remodel of the bathroom, sit, the floors were good enough, then why the fuck did I just pay you $80,000? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's my fault for not going out to Annapolis. I live in Oakland and I'm lazy and I did 40 houses last year. But my point is, is that all of this is like contingent upon you dealing with someone who's sophisticated like Mark, who knows what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? And pro tip, if anyone ever tags a contractor on any investor forum, know that he's shit. Know that no <laughs> one is ever tagged. Mark, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm saying that I had a tag last night from somebody. I think that's pretty nice. But who tagged you? Actually, actually, you're not taggable. I can't tag you. How's the construction of home? Oh, how's yeah. the construction? I can't tag Mark back. Like, like, you you tag. somehow or they say they have, have some kind of like filter on Mark Beckett that he will well, tag the construction company. My point is like, if someone's a really like, Mark does high end work, so he's obviously not less in demand, but if someone has like a really good contractor that you're using over and over again, are you really gonna share them with Facebook world? So that people will people take them? Sure, yeah, you can share, that doesn't make them available. Right. If <laughs> sharing is not, I mean, not yeah, we had a contractor, uh, Quinn, who we love and he's a good friend of ours. And like, literally, I think we made Quinn millions of dollars oh, right over like and, and finally we, we were like why don't we start a construction company we thought by the way we thought it was a lot easier than what it actually is it's hard it's, it's hard super hard yeah yeah it's hard the estimates right? are hard and they are the hardest right? but yeah the, these numbers ought to get you some kind of competent qualified person that would hope yes sir so uh, my problem is finding a, a good solid contractor I've been battling with that. I find a good one and then, you know, we do a few flips. And then, you know, every once in a while he gets upset and don't want to, you know, yeah. you get into the deadline. Hey, things need to get done because, you know, you got to sell this property. You're not yeah. playing here. And he gets upset. And then, you know, but he's really good. So I don't know. <laughs> you have that. Yeah. Are you getting upset because you're not paying him enough? Yeah, well, I am. I mean, no, trust me, you're not. Well, what is it? What is it? No, I, mean, I, I keep paying them extra. So no, I, I, just, I tell you, I've, I've done a lot. They gave, if people are giving, throwing you temper tantrums, it's because you're not paying them enough. But they're well, not throwing money at him. I don't know. Wait, you pay him well enough, he's going to be like, anything for you, Mr. Jack. Okay, like I was one guy, his name is Garcia. And then he's like, they're seeing the washer dress. No problem, Mr. Jet. I'll be right well, there. So, so that there's a balance, right? Is it, there, there's a balance. Money in him and I, I, I mean, he just thinks I'm just going to keep doing that. So every little chance he gets, he just want to throw it. But you know what he could have done? And he could have given you a low estimate to begin with to get the but job. My fault. Maybe just hear me out. And he gets a low estimate. He's like, okay, this guy wants me to do it for 60000 No problem. I'm just going to throw a temper tantrum every two months whenever I need more money and get him to increase the price. That's happened to me too. They just want to leave and go. And then I started realizing, uh, I see what you did. You gave me a little bit, just so you can get to see Mark will never do that. That's why you got to hire a real professional. It, it's, you know, don't do that. Man. Yeah, it's a, it's a balance because the investor wants the work done for the least amount. The contractor still has to like do the, uh, now that supplies and material is more expensive, it's right? And it's harder to, it's harder to book them. They're more in demand, mm -hmm. right? There's more people renovating and staying that like there's no inventory. So it's, it's like, you gotta find that balance between those two and, and treat them well and pay them. I, I, you know what? I don't even think it's, it has anything to do with money. He will tell me, oh, I can provide four guys and show up with two. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then when the work gets less, now he's the only one because he just don't want to pay the subcontractors. So let's go back to money. Yeah. But the it's, thing is, I'm paying him what he's asking and more. What so he's doing like, is he's taking he's taking that money and finishing another job because you know they, that's, yeah, what's that's what happens because what happens with construction people unfortunately is that they're not the best business people. And so sometimes they run out of money on one project and they need money from another mm, project yes. to complete it. So they take guys off a job to go complete and they're always behind the eight ball a little bit. Right? Yeah. And, and, and as an investor, uh, I think you will need to constantly be recruiting contractors because mm -hmm. it will go one way or the other. The sweet spot for contracting for investing is honestly the person who isn't really good at the business. Uh, in order to get it done at the price you want to pay, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have to not really completely understand their worth or their ability to do this for people who are willing to pay more, right? 
So that means it's going to go one of two ways. They will either not be around in a couple of years because they'll keep working for people not knowing what they're worth. Mm -hmm. And something will either go horribly wrong one day or they'll just really they won't do it anymore or they'll run out of money and they go away. Or they'll get better and then they'll drop you, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and that's exactly. that's just, that is the business. That's the business. Uh, that's the business. Yeah. Yeah. Your, yeah. Job, yeah. your job will be to constantly try to yeah, find that and person. Like, like that's a pretty woman. Right. Like dating a super pretty woman, but she doesn't know how hot she is. So you just gotta like keep her under wraps, you know? Don't, don't, don't make up. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm, trying her, I'm like, trying to figure out that enough. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just uh, close, <laughs> close enough. But yeah, that, that is part of the exercise is constantly staying in touch with people in any which way you can, even if it's from people who get tagged, but try to do your due diligence. And get some amount of referral on the people that you're you're going to be talking to. And by, and by the way, like and contractors will find themselves like busy, slow, busy, slow, mm -hmm. busy, right? Yeah. And so it depends on where you catch people sometimes. Right. That's true. They may get busy. I give my contractors at least two houses a month, or like you know, one house a month if they need it. So I'm always like, listen, you could fuck me on this house, but I'm telling you, you just lost out on eleven houses for the rest of the year. You can fudge them. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can have me on this house. I think it's up to you. You know, you guys don't want to work. So I think it's just about leverage, you know. Yeah, don't try it. You know, you try another contract this, and then you miss the whole. Then it's even worse. It's like oh, the, no, no, the lesser of all I did. I did a house recently in uh, you know. Manassas. <laughs> that was love the house really nice. This, I tried a new contractor because he was licensed, and um, the comments right now about the realtors for his name and emotion. <laughs> uh, are you on? It sounds uh, like next door. You yeah. heard of the website next door? Where, what part of the world do you live in? I'm in the southern part of Virginia, so like the lower end, Springs. So I'm a right from DC. Springfield, Woodbridge. Yeah, totally, Stafford. totally Stafford. works. Totally works. So your your neighborhood will be on next door. Uh, go on next door, and when you join, you join. They find out where you live. You have to tell them, and they verify that you actually live where you say you do. And then you will be able to see people discussing things in your community. A lot of Stuff that you're not going to be interested in, but if you just search for like contractors, you will see a lot of what next door is is neighbors talking to other neighbors about who got stuff done and who did you like. Oh, I love this guy. Call him for the thing. And there's really nothing any better, any more helpful than someone else's ringing endorsement. So you can still get a bad apple that way, but it's better than. Phone book going through the other page. No, no, the neighborhood is right. Go on next one. You're right about the neighborhood. I'm talking about investor pages. Yeah. I don't think investors are going to tag next other good, good contractors. Maybe. I think they tag people that are they, are they think are nice people and they don't want to ever use them again. Right. And so they try not to hurt their feelings by saying, oh, let's, I'll tag you on the investor page. Please make them someone else's problem. <laughs> uh, it, sounds, it sounds like take your, take your numbers and then compare it to the estimates they're giving you. Right, so you got you're doing the light remodel or whatever it's called. Did that guy estimate something that's similar to my eighteen bucks or my yeah. thirty five bucks? Well, what he's saying is that he's paying them; they're just, they're not even coming back. Yeah, but if if they're but it, then you'll know the low ball. Like, oh, okay, this guy is only charging me twenty bucks, and it should be thirty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then you know. Then, yeah. then, yeah. then he's going to nickel and dime me because he can't really do this affordable. Well, guys, well, this is what we're going to do. It is eight sixteen. Friend that joined us online, thank you for joining us online. Know that we're now going to have a real party happen <laughs> where they get to network with each other a little bit. But no, uh, honestly, thank you for, for joining us. We appreciate you guys joining us. Um, what's next week's, next month's topic? Oh, I don't know. Do you know next month's topic? Come on, man. We need to know the topic. I, I think Ukraine. it's in here. It's yeah. 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 For Ukraine. For Ukraine. For Ukraine. Ukraine. Meet up. I got meetup. Right uh, yeah, there you go. Tell us what's next month's topic. Uh, in the meantime, while we're looking that up, uh, you can find us and find out about next month's uh, topic uh, on gridinvestor.com, on meetup.com. How to negotiate the deal. How to negotiate the deal. Great. Uh, negotiating with uh, motivated sellers. So find out, uh, we don't have to find out when and where, because ours is the first Tuesday of every month, so we'll be here the first Tuesday of next month uh, at uh, 6.30. The reason why we do negotiating the deal next, when you think about it, is because now that you understand and you're having that and you're negotiating that with that person over the phone, you know what your estimation, uh, estimate renovation should look like, now is your time. Now don't say the wrong thing.
right? You've spent, see the way we've set this up is, this isn't for the, well, this will help you with pretty houses that are listed on the MLS, but it's also designed for the investor who's doing a lot of mass marketing and people are calling in. And then now you got to get on the phone and you have to have a discussion with that seller. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, what would you offer me? Right? And you got to be doing some quick yeah. numbers, right? And this is where this comes in play, right? So join us next, uh, next month. Right? Yep. So Facebook uh, closed to close group for grid investor if you ask to join we will let you in you it's grid investor community you have to put community because there's two pages there's a public face yep. facing in the all right yeah. grid investor community on yeah. the facebook and we'll let you in there right yeah all right so that's where you can find us uh otherwise we'll see you here uh on the first tuesday of next month thanks guys take care thank you, thank you. Sure. Thank you.